Welcome to the vulnerability analysis section. So we covered scanning and we managed to discover a bunch of information about our target. And right now we're going to use that information to discover whether a target has some vulnerabilities. We're going to cover three different tools in this section. And the first one is going to be an already familiar tool, which is called Nmap. We're going to tackle a subject on Nmap scripting. By now, we learned that Nmap is used for scanning targets. But Nmap can also perform vulnerability analysis, and in some cases it can even perform exploitation with the help of different scripts. As this is advanced use of Nmap, we should first explain what are these Nmap scripts. Well, Nmap scripts are commonly used in scanning to detect different service vulnerabilities. It can also be used for brute forcing attacks, it can be used to detect a malware on target machine. It is also used to collect even more information about databases and other network services. So we can consider this lecture to be half scanning and half vulnerability analysis. The goal of this lecture, however, will not be the vulnerability analysis, but to show you how we can run these scripts. And before we even run them, we need to know what are our available options. So, where are those scripts? How do we run them? How do we know which scripts even exist? Inside of the Kali Linux, we can find all the scripts that Nmap has inside of this directory. So, open up your terminal and navigate to user share slash Nmap and then slash scripts. If I type ls right here, we can see there are a lot of them. Let us test some of them out and see whether they give us any information about our target. Now, running scripts comes with two different options. We can either specify one script to use in a scan, or we can specify a group of scripts that we will use inside of a scan. And to fully understand all the possible things that we can do with scripts using Nmap, you should take a look at this page right here. This is the official Nmap page from the nmap.org link. And in the slash book slash nseusage.html, it will give us a good explanation about script groups and the usage of Nmap. If I scroll all the way down, here is the usage and examples. We get different script categories, which are script groups. We can see right here that the currently defined categories are auth, broadcast, brute, default, discovery, and many more, right here. And down here we can read about each and every one of them to see what each script group does. So for example, right here, the brute script group, it says these scripts are used to brute force attacks to guess authentication credentials of a remote server. Nmap contains scripts for brute forcing dozens of protocols, including HTTP brute, Oracle brute, SNMP brute, and so on and so on. Let us test some of them out. Let us start with this auth script group first. We can read these scripts deal with authentication credentials or bypassing them on the target system. Examples include X11 access, FTP anonymous, and Oracle anonymous users. Now, these right here that you read are single script names. And these single scripts belong to this larger script group. Right here it also says scripts which use brute force attacks to determine credentials are placed in the brute category instead. So right here there are no scripts that are used for brute forcing. And what the brute forcing simply means is running a bunch of usernames and passwords onto the target system to discover which one is the correct username and which one is the correct password but more about brute forcing later on. For now, let us go and test some of these scripts. To run a scan with a script group, we can use nmap dash dash script, and after it, we specify the script group. So in my case, I will use auth, and I will scan my metasploitable machine with the sin scan. Remember, sin scan requires sudo privileges, so let's add sudo, and type in our password. As soon as it finishes, we're going to see whether this auth script group discovered any useful information for us regarding vulnerabilities. Okay, so it has finished. Let us see whether our script managed to detect anything unusual. 
So we get the standard output of all the open ports, and we also get some other information for some of the ports. For example, right here we get FTP Anon, and this FTP Anon is just a single script name from the Nmap. It tells us that anonymous FTP login is allowed. Hmm, what does this mean? Well, this is something that we will cover later. For now on, just keep in mind that anonymous login is allowed for the port 21. Under the SSH port, we get which authentication methods are supported, right here. Down here we get information for the SQL port. It tells us that root account has empty password. This can also be very useful for us. And right here we can see Tomcat, two dots, Tomcat. What does this mean? Well, this looks like a default Tomcat credentials. And if I go down here, it tells us post scan script results. It says that this is a valid credential for Tomcat. It is for the service running on this port. Let us check this out. This might be the first vulnerability that we find. To check whether this is correct, we can go and open up Firefox. And we're going to make a connection to our Metasploitable on this port right here. So just find out the IP address of your Metasploitable. And if you scanned it right now, you already know it. So for me, it is 192.168.1.6. And to make a connection to a port, I will type two dots and then the port number. In my case, what seems to be a vulnerability is found on this port. So let's copy the port and I will paste it right here. Oops. It seems that it only pasted the port. Let me just retype this and type the port like this. So 8180 and then visit this. And here we get the official Apache Tomcat page. Let's see whether we can find something interesting right here. And what we're looking for based on these credentials is a login screen. So this Tomcat administration seems interesting. If I click on it, it leads us to this admin page where we are required to specify username and password. And down here from our scan, we got Tomcat and Tomcat. Let's try it out and see whether it fits. If I type Tomcat for the username and Tomcat for the password, click on login. There it is. We managed to log in to the admin page of the Tomcat server. Great, this is our first vulnerability that we managed to discover and exploit. We are now in the administrator page of the Tomcat. Now, there are other things that we can do right here as well, but for now, we're just happy that we managed to gain access to the administrator page. Down here we have user databases, mail sessions, data sources, and these are all empty because this is a test machine, but if it was a real machine, this would probably all be filled with some other useful information. Great, let's leave this on side for now. So we managed to gain access to the Tomcat administrator page with the help of Nmap script. Let's see what else we can do with scripts. So let's go and try out the malware scan. These scripts test whether the target platform is infected by malware or backdoors. Let's see whether our target is infected with malware. If we can run the same command, just this time, instead of auth, we're going to use malware. Let's run the scan. And let me control C this, just so we can make this faster. I'm going to use the dash capital F option to scan only 100 ports and not 1000 ports. And it doesn't seem to find any malware right here. But what you can do with this scan you can wait for us to first exploit the Metasploitable in the next section, and then test this scan once again to see whether you can notice any backdoors that we uploaded that are making connection to our Cal Linux machine. For now, it doesn't seem to give us any result for the first 100 ports. Let's try another scan. We're going to use right now the banner script group. And what banners are, are simply what the open port will give us is the information once we connect to it. Banners usually hold information disclosure, and by information disclosure they can give us the exact version of the software running on an open port. And we can see the scan has finished, 
and we get the banner which holds the version for the FTP. We get the banner for the SSH that also holds the version. And this is something similar for the version scan that we covered in Nmap. Now, sometimes banner will look something like this, and this is something that we cannot read. But I will show you in the exploitation section that this Telnet port is one of the easiest ports to exploit and gain access to Metasploitable. And we are going to do this over banner. For now, it seems that we cannot even read this banner, but later we are going to use the exact same banner for Telnet to gain access to the Metasploitable. Let's check out another scan. Let's try this scan group. And this scan group is called exploit. And while it runs, if I go right here and try to find that scan group, it tells us that the scripts that belong to this exploit scan group aim to actively exploit some vulnerability. Here are some of the examples of the script names that belong to the group. So this script group will actually try to exploit if it finds a vulnerability. Let's see whether it finished, and it did finish. Right here we can see port 80. Spidering limited to this found the following possible CSRF vulnerabilities. So here are the possible vulnerabilities that it found for this specific vulnerability. And for now on, don't worry about this. This type of vulnerabilities for the HTTP port, we are going to cover in the website penetration testing section. For now, we're just taking a look at how we can discover them using vulnerability analysis. Let's go all the way up. And for the FTP port, it tells us right here that the port is vulnerable. It is running this version. And it seems that it managed to exploit it, as it says right here, vulnerable and exploitable. And right here we get the exploit results. The nmap script ran this command and it actually managed to get the root account on the target machine. So we found another vulnerability. Here is the FTP port that is exploitable. Now, we don't really know how to exploit it yet, but for now, with the help of scripts and vulnerability analysis, we know that this right here is exploitable. And in the exploitation section, we're going to see exactly how we can gain access and perform the same thing that the nmap performed right here. Now, under these IDs, you will see this name right here. Now, get used to these type of names. This is how different vulnerabilities are labeled. This 2011 is a year when the vulnerability occurred. Okay, great. But these are just some of the script groups that we can run. Of course, we're not going to be running all of them in this video, since, as you see right here, there is a lot of them. You can test them out and see what each and every one of them do. But for now, let us just see how we can run one script. We saw how we can run script groups, but sometimes you will only want to run a single script. And we already know that scripts are located inside of this directory, right here. And there is a lot of them. Let's go all the way up and try to find some cool script. Hmm, this one seems interesting. Firewall bypass. And this .nse is just the extension for the scripts. And by the way, do not blindly run these scripts. What you can do to check out what exactly a certain script does is you can copy its name and then run the command sudo nmap dash dash script dash help and then the name of the script. So paste the script name and type enter. It will tell us that this particular script detects a vulnerability in NetFilter and other firewalls that use helpers to dynamically open ports for protocols such as FTP and SIP. Right here it also tells us how the script works. So the script works by spoofing a packet from the target server asking for opening a related connection to a target port. And to run it, in case you want to run it, you can type sudo nmap dash dash script and it is similar to running the script groups. All we need to do is just paste the name of the script and add the IP address. It will start running this script onto the target. And for now, it seems that we got the exact same output of a normal nmap scan. Usually you will get this output. That means the script didn't work. So since this one didn't seem to give any output, let's try another one. 
Let's try the one that we already know will give us an output. And that one is FTP anon.nse. And remember when we ran one of the script groups? This script gave us the output for the FTP port, telling us that anonymous FTP login is allowed. Let's see whether we get the same result right now. If I run it, go all the way up, and it tells us anonymous FTP login allowed. And I already told you that FTP anonymous login means that you can use anonymous username and a random password to log in to the FTP. Let's see whether it will work. Let's just test it out. We are curious. We want to see what does this anonymous FTP login mean. To do that, we're going to connect to a target using FTP. So you just type FTP and then the IP address of the target machine, in our case of the Metasploitable, press enter. And right here, it will ask us for the name. Let's type anonymous. And let's type the password. Here you can type anything you want. In my case, I will just type password123 and press enter. And here it is, login successful. Remote system type is Unix. And now we can use the help command to see what are our available options inside of this FTP server. So we can run these commands right here. Great, it seems that FTP anonymous login is indeed allowed. But once again, more about FTP and the FTP vulnerabilities that we discovered in the exploitation section. For now, we managed to find out about some potential vulnerabilities, such as the Tomcat administrator login, the FTP port 21 showed to also be vulnerable. Remember when we ran the exploit script group, it told us that it is exploitable. But let's also see what else we can find using other vulnerability analysis tools.